Good morning. This is Miss Susie from the Pilgrim Holiness Church. We're glad you joined us this morning. This is Mother's Day. And so to all you moms out there, hope you have a happy Mother's Day. And maybe the kids have made you breakfast in bed. So we're going to start off our program this morning with singing, He's Everything We Need. And I hope that you can sing with me as we sing this song, okay? When our hearts are hungry, he is a miracle indeed. Jesus is all that we need this morning. that God is everything we need. We're living in uncertain times and when we have problems, it's so wonderful to be able to go to Jesus and he can help us through the problem. Okay, this morning we're talking about adoption and God has adopted each one of us who have asked him into our hearts. He has adopted us into his family and our Bible this story this morning is about baby Moses. And most of you have heard of baby Moses and baby Moses was adopted too. So we're going to tell you the story of baby Moses. The Egyptians had made the Israelites slaves. They had to carry heavy bricks while cruel masters watched over them. They couldn't even take a few minutes to rest. And the taskmasters made their lives miserable. But God was taking care of the people of Israel. And instead of fewer people, more people were being born all the time. And the Egyptians became alarmed. Better make them work harder, King Pharaoh said. He may have thought if the taskmasters worked them to death, there would be fewer people left to fight. But more and more people were born to the Hebrew parents. Then the king thought of a terrible, wicked plan. I know what I'll do, he said. I will have all the little Hebrew babies killed as soon as they're born. Then they can never grow up to be soldiers. What an awful thing for the king to do. The king commanded the Egyptians to throw all the Hebrew newborn babies into the Nile River. But there was one mother whose name was Jochebed. And she looked at her little baby boy and said to her husband, Isn't our baby sweet? We will never, never let him be thrown into the river like the king commanded. I have a plan, Jacobet said. We will, we will not let the king have him and we'll make him a little basket. And so Jacobet made him a little basket. Because you see, Moses was getting bigger and bigger. 
and his voice was getting louder, and Jataka was sure that the soldiers would hear him. So she put, took, went and took him down to the Nile River, and Moses had a big sister whose name was Mary, and she put Mary in the bulrushes to watch over the baby Moses. And can you imagine the baby floating in the water? That must have calmed him, and he must have went to sleep. So Jezebel went on home. All went well for a while until Miriam heard someone walking down the path. Who could that be? Miriam watched. And here came the princess, the king's daughter. She was coming down to the river to bathe. Oh no, what would happen to baby Moses? Well, she came down to the water, and as she was there, she noticed a little basket. And she said to her maid, there's a basket in the river. Go get that for me. I want to see what it is. So the maid came, and she brought the basket to her, and they opened it up. And what do you think was in it? It was baby Moses. And the princess said, you know, this must be one of the Hebrew children. You know what? I am going to keep him. Well, all this time, poor Miriam was in the bulrushes, and she all of a sudden came forward, and she said to the princess, Would you like me to go find a nursemaid for the baby? I'm sure Miriam was really scared, but she was brave, and the Lord helped her. And the princess said, You know what? That would be a good idea. So Miriam raced off for home just fast as she could go. And guess who she found? She went and got her mother and brought her mother back. And the princess said to Miriam's mother, she said, take this child and nurse him. And when he is old enough, he will come to the palace and live from, with me and be my son. So baby Moses went to the palace when he was around roughly five years old and lived with the princess and the king's soldiers were not able to kill him because the princess adopted him. Isn't that a beautiful story? God watched over Moses even in the midst of terrible times. Okay, so now we're going to have our prayer time. And we have, we need to pray especially this morning for our moms, that the Lord will bless them and give them a good day today. We need to pray for our country that the Lord will heal our land and help us in this pandemic. We need to pray for each of you kids as you're not in school, that you will be able to do your schoolwork online or whatever your teachers have given you to do, and that you'll have a good week. So we're going to sing our prayer song. I want you to fold your hands like what we do in church, and we're going to talk to Jesus. Okay, so let's start our prayer song, and we're going to work with that right now. thankful that it doesn't matter when we come to you, you are always there. We can talk to you in the morning, we can talk to you at noon, we can talk to you in the evening time, and Lord, you are always there ready for us to come and speak with you. Lord, we pray for the special request this morning. Lord, we pray for all of our mothers. I ask, Lord, that you would bless each one, be with them on their special day today as Mother's Day, be with the children, Lord, as they're not in school this week, be with them and help them as they do their online work with their teachers. Lord, be with all the, we are with our country, Lord, and all of the pandemic that's going on. We ask, Lord, that you would give us help once again. We ask, Lord, that for all these things that you do, we thank you. Amen. Okay, now we're going to sing Hallelujah. And this is one of your favorite songs. So I want you to help me right where you are, and let's sing hallelujah, okay? I'm not able to stand up and down because of this, but I want you to go ahead. All right, let's go. 
to do. Max had gotten caught in the trap and there he lay so still and stiff and his friend Clyde didn't know what to do. So we'll continue on where we left off last week. Clyde turned and ran in the direction of the family rat hole. He needed to get help from Max as he needed it quickly. Help he called as he slid through the hole in the family's home. Come quick something's wrong with Max. He got caught in one of Farmer Smith's traps. When Max's mother heard the words, she gasped and exclaimed, Clyde, run and get Pa. He needs to go with us to the trap to help rescue Max. So Clyde led the way as Ma and Pa followed him to the trap. Ma wiped the tears from her eyes with her apron. She knew she'd done her best to warn Max. Max would not listen. <clears throat> Back down the barn, the three rats sadly made their way to the trap, and there lay Max, still and stiff. Mom, Pa checked Max. There was nothing that they could do. He was gone. The trap had done exactly what it was intended to do. Mom and Pa stood over their son and cried. They wiped their tears as Ma cried. I tried to warn Max, but he wouldn't listen. He was such a nice son. It is so sad that he won't live to grow up and have his own family. And Pa, he saw he was becoming such a good hunter. I was so proud of him. Pa stopped and took Ma by the hand. Ma, we'd better head home before Farmer Smith comes and discovers us here. Clyde, let this be a warning to you. Don't play with a trap. If you do, sooner or later, you are going to get caught and the three rats headed back to the family rat hole. Ma and Pa would miss their cute little son, Max. Home would not be the same without him. He would never come home for one of Ma's meals. He would never hunt with Pa again. His life had ended early because he would not heed Ma and Pa's advice. Ma and Pa did know best, but Max would never learn that important truth. That evening, Farmer Smith made his way into the bottom part of the barn. Where he got to the back of the barn and he had set the trap, he saw Max. Yes, he smiled. I've caught another rat in this barn. He picked up the trap and carried Max away. That's one less rat I'll have to put up with eating my corn and oats. And Max was carried away, never to be seen again. The days following Max's death passed slowly. Hardly a day passed by without Ma and Pa and Clyde thinking about Max. The house seemed so quiet and empty. And sometimes Ma and Pa didn't think they could stand the quietness and the loneliness. And they wondered, will we ever get used to Max not being here? One day, an idea came to Ma. She would have to talk it over with Pa. Just the idea made her feel better. It took away some of the gloom and the loneliness. She couldn't wait for Pa. To get home from his day's adventure. She hoped that Pa would get home before Clyde returned from his daily food hunting trip. 
when Ma and Pa, Ma heard Pa slide through the hole of their house, she ran to meet him. At supper that evening, she presented her idea. Pa, I've got an idea. Oh, please listen to me, she begged. Pa couldn't believe her excitement. This was a first spark of excitement he had seen in her since Max's death. Now, dear, calm down. What are you so excited about? Pa, I've got an idea. And it's a wonderful idea. And I hope you'll agree. Well, what's the idea? Pa asked. How am I ever going to agree unless you calm down and tell me? Oh, forgive me. I guess I got beside myself. I am so excited that I forgot I haven't told you yet. I don't know why I got the idea. It just came to me right out of the blue. Pa interrupted Ma's constant string of exclamations. Ma, you haven't told me your idea. Why don't you slow down? Take a seat. Tell me what has you so worked up. This is the most excitement I've seen from you in weeks. Ma sat down and expressed her idea to Pa. Pa, I was feeling so down and discouraged when I thought about Max that I didn't know what I was going to do. I was beside myself. I thought of all the energy and effort we put into Max and seemingly for nothing. I felt like we were a failure. Then the thought came to me. Ma hesitated as if she were thinking about something and Pa broke into the silence. Ma, what is it you want to tell me? Pa, you and I have good health. Ma smiled again. We still have days ahead of us to be useful and productive. And I've been thinking that our usefulness in this life was over. But today, that changed. And I realized that our usefulness would not be over. We could pick up right where we left off with Max. Pa was having trouble figuring out what Ma was talking about. And finally, he asked Ma, what are you getting at? Well, Clyde lives with us. And he doesn't have a family. And he misses Max, too. And I was thinking, since Clyde doesn't have a family, maybe we could be his family. Do you think we could adopt Clyde and make him our own son? What do you think, Pa? Pa couldn't believe his ears. He hadn't thought about this. And now Ma was asking him for an answer? Ma, don't be in such a hurry. Give me time to sort this all out. You need an answer right this minute? After all, it would be a, accepting a lot of responsibility. I'm not sure I'm up to that. You know, it is one thing to allow someone to live with you, but it's entirely something different to accept responsibility for someone. Besides, I think that Clyde should have some say and whether he would like to become our son. Have you talked to him about this? Oh no, I haven't talked to him about it. I was hoping to get an answer from you before he got home from hunting today. I wanted to see what you thought about it. Pa, I think it would really help me to have a son and to help train him. Maybe we could pick up where we left off with Max. I think it would be good for both of us. Okay, Ma, when Clyde returns, we'll sit down and talk it over with him. I hope that you've considered what this means. Have you? Pa asked. Ma didn't answer right away. She thought for a while and then responded, Pa, I have considered it and I'm up to the challenge. Clyde needs us, and we need him. I think this would be best for all of us. Ma heard tiny paw pats on the rough boards, and she knew that Clyde was coming home. And Pa met Clyde as he re was returning from his day's adventure looking for new food sources. How was your day, Clyde? Pa asked. Just fine, sir. I think I found a new source of delicious food for us. I want to show it to you tomorrow. Will you go with me? Clyde asked. I would be happy to go with you and see what you found. Pa patted Clyde on the shoulder. Clyde, Ma has something she wants to talk over with you. Will you come with me into the kitchen? Hesitantly, Clyde asked, did I do something wrong? Oh no, you have not done anything that I'm aware of. Ma has an idea and she wants to pass it by you. You know Ma, she won't rest until this matter gets settled. For who? For her? The sooner the better. So Clyde followed Pa into the kitchen. And then they all sat down. Ma started in right away. Clyde, you know how I have missed Max, and sometimes I feel useful since he's gone. I got to thinking today and wondered if you would like to have a real Ma and a Pa. I mean, she stopped and she looked at Clyde. Clyde looked surprised. I would love to have a Ma and a Pa. 
But you know what happened. I don't have one. As a matter of fact, Clyde stopped in mid-sentence. He wondered if he should even finish his statement and decided to continue. As a matter of fact, I don't even have a family. I'm here with you right now, but I don't know where I'll be next week. You and Pa may get tired of me and ask me to leave. I don't really have a home of my own. I can't have a Ma and a Pa. You know that. Ma smiled as she explained, what you have said is true. You don't have a family. You don't have a place of your own, but I would like to change that, Clyde. Would you like to become a part of our family? I mean, would you like to be our son? We would be your Ma and Pa. Ma paused and allowed the idea to sink into Clyde's mind. He looked surprised as he responded, What do you mean? How can I be your son? How can you be my real Ma and Pa? The young rat was definitely confused. And he wondered, Is there something I don't know? Is there something I should have been told many years ago? Ma tried to explain. Clyde, Ma's being truthful when she says she wants to know if you'd like to have a family. You see, she would like to adopt you and to make you our real son. We would be your family. This would be your home. We would be your Ma and Pa. Would you like that? Pa waited for an answer. The thought was more than Clyde could imagine. It was Clyde's turn to ask questions. Do you mean you would be my true parents and no one would be able to take me away from you? Do you mean you would never ask me to leave because you got tired of me? I wouldn't have to leave just because I did something wrong? Is that what you mean? Ma picked up the conversation. That's exactly what we mean, Clyde. You would be our son, just like Max was our son. What is yours? Ours would be yours, and you would not just be living here with us or staying with us. This would be your forever home, and we would be your forever family. Would you like that? It's called adoption, Clyde. You would be adopted into our family forever. Clyde couldn't believe his ears. The idea was more than what he could ever imagine. It didn't take Clyde long to respond. I would love that. I would love to have the two of you as my mom and pa. Clyde stopped. He looked down as if something was wrong. He looked worried. What's wrong, Clyde? On second thought, have you decided you don't want to be our son? No, that's not what's wrong. It's just that Clyde couldn't express what he was thinking. And Pa encouraged, go on, Clyde. Tell us what's bothering you. You can tell us. We want to know how you feel, especially if you're going to be our family. Clyde stammered. It's just that, do you, I mean... Are you really sure that you want me for your son? I have nothing I can give you. Oh, Clyde, if we didn't want you, we would not have asked you to be part of our family. We would not have gone on as we are to present this to you. We love you, Clyde. We love you not because of what you have done or what you have or don't have. We love you because of who you are. We want you to be our son. You see, when Max was born, we loved him. And since he was born to us, we were expected to take him as our son. He was born into this family. However, when or if we adopt you, we wouldn't have to take you on because you were born into the family. It is a choice we have made. It is because we want you. It is a choice you will have to make also. You will have to decide if you want to be adopted to be our son. Clyde couldn't have been happier. He agreed he wanted to be adopted into the family. But he had one more question. Ma, what are you going to do with all Max's things in his room? Ma couldn't help but chuckle. Clyde, they're yours now. Since you are our son, you get all the benefits of being our son. All those things are now yours. Clyde let out a squeak. Yay! I have a home, a forever family. I have a ma and a pa. I belong. And Clyde ran to his room. It was no longer Max's room. It was his. Yes, Ma and Pa would make it official. They would get adoption papers, so legally, to legally show that Clyde was their son. Pa watched Clyde run to his room and then asked, Ma, Clyde seems to comprehend the blessings of being adopted. I wonder if he realizes the duties that come along with it. Ma looked at Pa and said, Pa, you'll find out soon enough. Let him enjoy the reality that now he has a family. Tomorrow, he'll find out some of the duties that come along with being part of this family. So we hope you have enjoyed this story of how the little Clyde was adopted. 
Do you know when we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins, God adopts us into his family. And we have a Heavenly Father who can be with us and help us through the trials of life no matter what. So this morning on Mother's Day, we once again wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.